Okay, thank you very much. I know everyone was eagerly awaiting the uh, use of facilities policy presentation, so I'll do my best to, uh, to get through my uh, 27 slides. But uh, I, was, I was asked to do a presentation to bring uh, the full board as well as the public up to date on the work that's uh, taken place in the past two years on use of facilities. At no point anything you see on the screen is final or in, a, in its final form, and I'll share with you our next steps at the end of this in terms of uh, how we're going to continue to collect information from um, some of the most uh, all the groups that use the facilities to help craft the next couple steps for the for the pol uh, for the policy committee. So we'll get started here. I'm not sure how that got in there. I was challenged at one point. Well, I haven't seen any pictures from the Eagles stuff. So, Mr. Develli, here you go. So. I'll just take, I'll, I'll click off these slides fairly quickly about my experience at the Super Bowl <laughs> that I had. I was fortunate, what's that? Yes, yes, yes. So that's, uh, I did have a great opportunity at the Super Bowl. So there we are at the, at the end of the Super Bowl. And I didn't realize there was two different kinds of confetti. There's confetti for the main stadium. And then right up where the trophy is, there's confetti that's actually cut out by little trophies. They look like little Lombardi trophies. I didn't realize that or I would have got some of that. Um, <laughs> so. I do have uh, some confetti, but great opportunity. And that's us getting ready for the parade. And there's one of the pictures on the parade as we're heading down Broad Street. What's that? I'm to the left of the uh, mascot, winter hat on. Okay. So we're here tonight to talk about use of facilities. And uh, so I want to share with you our current policy, 707. As you can see at the top there, it was adopted in 91 and revised in, uh, in 2010. So that kind of gives you a frame out of how long it's been uh, worked out. It's a little hard to see their purpose. You can, I'm not going to read that to you. As you'll see a lot of, of, of writing on the screen tonight. The purpose of the policy and in the, in the, in the, where the board and the school is acknowledging the use of facilities is important to the community, as well as developing procedures uh, to make that happen under those parameters. And again, um, in the policy itself, you'll see there's procedures for granting the use, the activity classifications, which we currently have six classifications inside those six. Um, there are some A's and B's, so actually probably breaking out, it's almost 10 categories, but that has to do with charges and fees, um, and you can list, see list some of the groups that are using our facilities. It does lay out the charges and fees, as well as the application approval process, and then the insurance requirements. These are pretty standard items that are in uh, most of the pol all the policies that I've seen from other districts, but I wanted to give everyone a frame out of the use of facilities policy. It's 10 pages, but 14 with, with addendums, which I'm sure everyone wanted to know. Okay. So the current policy, as I just said, was adopted in 91. It was revised in 2010, and there was an addition for an addendum which addresses the use of the facilities um, with uh, parent-teacher organizations, homeless school associations, the Booster Club, the Springfield Music Association, and the Ed Foundation in terms of the usage and the ability to, uh, to get additional usage um, to help out the groups that are directly supporting the district. That's in the policy there. And there are three, series, three policies in the 707 series. 701, seven, sorry, 707.1 and 707.2, we, the, the, the committee actually moved forward in January. So those two have already been done. When we opened this up in April of 16, of 2016, uh, all three policies were on there. 707, uh, the straight use facilities took it, it was taking its time. The other two we were able to move quicker. So those two policies have been revised and approved by the board in January. Okay. So here's the timeline to bring everyone up. So. Buckle up for a couple couple slides here, but we want to make sure that everyone sees the, the progression here. So again, two literally two years ago in April, this was first listed on the policy agenda, whether it was a recommendation from the board or just a, in the series for um, policy updates and recommend uh, and revisions. That's when it first went on the agenda. At that point, Mrs. Spletzer was the chair, uh, Mrs. Haney and Mrs. Sadowski were on the committee. Okay, in May it was deferred to June. Again, I ripped through all the minutes here. In June, um, I, I, you can see there take a look at with district administration and get feedback on the policy and we re reconvene back in September. In September we looked at pages one to four because it had to be chunked out to, to, to work there and work through the, uh, the conversations. We talked about reclassification and the ultimate fee structures to see how the district was progressing, <coughs> excuse me, under the current policy, fees and structures and covering costs. And then finally in November on this slide, um, we continued to have conversations, went back with the changes from pages one to four to administration, and then brought that back in January. So you can see a lot of back and forth between the committee, myself serving, serving as a liaison, and getting feedback from administration to, to, uh, to take those recommendations forward. Okay. And in January, uh, we actually had a new, we had a committee change. Uh, not, not a change, but Mrs. Zazowski then took over the chair, and Mrs. Haney and Mrs. Spletzer were also on the committee. So it was very consistent through that time frame. In March, we had an updated dra draft reviewed of the overall fee structure. 
and we started to do some research from other districts as well to see what was going on in other districts. And then we were asking for some information about actual true costs that were taking place from the business office as well as facilities, because they both they impact both of those uh, uh, both of those departments in terms of facility usage. Okay. Again, updated draft, and then we began to clarify the terms rental charge and service fee. So that was we wanted to make sure that those were clear in our policy. Um, so rental charge was defined as fixed charges for the use of the facility, and then you can see the service fees there, which pretty much were labor and other costs that are associated with using the facility. Okay, then in November, um, Mrs. Zazowski came back to the committee after visiting property and, and finance and sharing her, her experience there and, and provided feedback to the committee. And um, we began to look at the, um, the feedback from, from Mr. Cooper in terms of the amount of time, the amount of effort, the amount of additional staffing that may be needed for a certain rental or for pre-setup or for late night cleanup to get everything ready for the building. Even on school nights, uh, the type of staff that were, that were involved in certain rentals to get a full picture of what we were talking about, not just simply turning the key and opening the door and, and, and having the facility rental piece from there. Okay. Then in January, we looked at an analysis from Mr. Fink in terms of the finances. So again, Mr. Fink and Mr. Cooper worked together on costs for employee costs, uh, as well as the, the, the other costs that are associated in utilities. Okay. And then in January of 18, we had another uh, committee change. Uh, Mrs. Zowski is still the chair, Mrs. Haney and Mr. Dennert um, uh, raised his hand and signed up for the policy committee. Okay, so just recently in February, uh, Mr. Fink attended the meeting and we reviewed the numbers that he presented based upon his conversations and his analysis. And that, those numbers, which you'll see a, a few tonight, were not about the actual use of facilities at the time it's being used. It was simply about the cost of a person to be at the building. So their, their total costs in terms of uh, salary, any taxes, and, and retirement pieces of, as an employee, and then the incidental costs of sewer, electricity, those type of things. The, convers and the conversation about should you charge a group when there's someone over work already working is not about those numbers. Those numbers were just simply asked to be presented to know and understand the potential cost that's there. So we'll get to that, what I just said in a couple slides. So that was in February. And then we redefined the service fee, as you can see there, employee compensation with all taxes and retirement, as well as the cost of electricity, sewer, water, and cleaning costs. Not, it was small, but as that adds up, that uh, was included in that hourly rate for the service fee. Okay. Finally, in March, um, we had a little homework as a committee. Mrs. Zaski came back. She shared her homework of, of cross-referencing the two policies from the current policy over to the other policy, to the new policy numbers and ideas about um, costs and, and, and rental fee and rental charges and service fees. And the continue, committee continued to have a discussion on that, on that item. And then in April, uh, as we continued to have the conversation, we were, I was nominated to do a presentation to update the board on the, uh, the, use, the use of facilities policy work in the last two years. So that's why we're here today. And then next month, as you'll see at the end in May, we're going to have, we're going to shift our meeting here to the high school. We'll put some invitations out to the, uh, the main group users of the, uh, the, uh, the facilities to solicit some, fee some feedback on the work to date take a look at some, uh, some numbers in terms of rental charges and service fees and have discussions and get, collect feedback from the, the various groups uh, to help guide the next pol the policy work from the committee so they can feel that, see, see that information and make decisions. And then that'll, that'll move forward. So this is def definitely, like I said, not final in any way, but that's the next plan. So, oop. so on that day in May, we're actually shifting the uh, Extracurricular meeting, which everyone's welcome to come up to 6 o'clock. We're going to do policy non-use of facility items from 7 to 7.30. And then at 7.30, we'll open the door for use of facilities conversations and, and get direction from there. Okay. This may or may not help you in terms of what other local districts are doing. It's, it's, it's literally, it's, it's everything is, every district is different. The way they manage things, the way that they have charges, the way that they have fees. Very similar in the sense of the classes where class one is either the school itself and the PT, PTO, home and school associations, booster clubs, those type of things. Class two is typically your, your groups um, that are, that are uh, tax exempt and that are the, the youth organizations and I'll have a description of class two. But anyway, when you look up there and you see class two or class three, um, that's lifted right up their policies um, in terms of how they, how they manage and, uh, and, and collect fees for different rentals. So that just gives you a little bit of a flavor of local districts, how it's, consistently inconsistent how it goes from district to district, but I wanted to at least paint that picture um, to give some ideas in, on that research. Okay. 
So as I talked about pages one to four, I will share some of the recommendations that I think are more towards the final stages of agreement from the committee that I, that I saw were in there. So we talked about an application. The application for rental was shifting from 30 days back to 60 days, so the planning can, planning can take place and, uh, and using an online system, the current school dude um, online application system, so we'd have to update the policy because now it's just paper and you hand it to a certain person. So we're gonna clean that up. We had to clarify um, the time frame for uh, the application to get submitted whether you know, some people want to submit four years in advance, we just frame that out so uh, it's consistent with the seasons that are coming up and no more than a year in advance. Uh, we did establish or discuss establishing some set dates where the district is not open for rentals. These are, these are dates that, that we're saying we're, we're not open. And I'll say it once tonight, I'll try to not say it a lot, is that we're a school district that has, that has, has people that use the facilities. So we have employees and we have um, other times where we're, we're not gonna be open. This is for the class two, three, or four, I believe the way it's written, um, I know sometimes over breaks there may be a, an in-house game or, or something that's scheduled that way. But for the most part for rentals, those were the days that we established in committee um, that we would not be, not be open for rentals. And we talked about appropriate use of facilities. We had some, clar uh, we wanted to clarify some pieces about open flame, canned heat. Again, this is policy stuff that's important um, in the details. We, we talked about adjusting the end time Currently, the policy says that rentals end at 11 during the week and 12 on the weekend. And similar to the conversation we had above about the use of facilities uh, dates, um, the, the recommendation was in there to push that up back to 10 and 11. Again, there are probably a couple things that, that may adjust that, but in general, for renting piece, uh, purposes, that would be uh, a recommendation that is pretty much still in that conversation piece. And then we talked about uh, implications for misuse. So obviously, a misuse or, or uh, you know, we, we got more clear with if something is misused, that it would be up to a year's, um, up to a year of, uh, of losing the privilege to use the facilities and be clear about some of those things. And you can list, you can see what they're listed there, safety, security, um, sharing, your, sharing your contract, or if you, if you have a, if you have a, a, if you're one organization and someone wants to use your, um, your title to get in to use the facility at a different time, and that's really not the purpose of that organization, um, then you're putting yourself in jeopardy to, to use that and have the facility uses at a certain class or a certain rate. So that puts both groups in jeopardy. So unfortunately it has happened. So the, the policy is just trying to clarify that if that happens, here's the potential loss that's gonna be there if, if, if it's found to be inappropriate. Again, those are some things that have been in there that we haven't talked about in a while, but um, have been a part of that conversation. In, also in the policy, there's two areas currently right now which talk about fees that are set up by the business office, so that's a relationship with the YMCA and before and after school care, as well as summer camps. So two more areas we added to this section right now has been a long-term facility rental. So if there's a group that rents for a long period of time or a season, as I've seen in a lot of other paperwork, that conversation can take place with the business offices to really take a look at the needs and uh, not so much work off the, the, excuse me, the a la carte item, which you'll see the service fees piece, but if there's a long-term relationship there or there's a setting up for a season, you can work those costs out between the business office and the organization itself. And then finally, we, we addressed um, PIAA and uh, post-season tournaments and where they come to ask to use the facilities. So they may, we may host a game at, uh, at McNally Stadium. They may request to use our facility. So we just kind of address that in terms of uh, what that looks like cost-wise or you know, how, that, how that will work, that it is a benefit to our district as well as community relations as well as if, if our team happens to play here. So um, those are just two additional pieces to that uh, fees established by the business office section. One area that we're still having conversations with that um, we can't really find a solid solution. So on May 14th, I'd love to have this conversation with the, with the groups that come in as well as door and security safety. Currently, that's what it says in our policy. Any organization that uh, uses the facilities is responsible for monitoring the admittance and supervising the conduct of participants and spect spectators. I'm not sure if, you, if, if that's happening all the time from what I hear from some of the facilities. Employees, it's not, that there's not someone at the door monitoring who's coming in and out. Sometimes people are, are running here and there. Um, more so with the current discussions of safety and security, this is an area that the committee struggled with. We have a couple ideas. Is it, is it enforceable? Is it, is it reasonable? Is it practical? Um, so that's some feedback we're going to need on how to really do that, not just turn the key and walk away or have someone stationed there. That's a, that's a challenge. And that's not just a Springford challenge. That's a challenge in every school system that's doing rental, rentals. So um, that, that'll be good feedback that we can get on May, on May 14th. 
Um, so again, what's realistic, what's enforceable. Um, we also want to make sure that our buildings are protected, that no one has free access to go and put something on them, you know, we just want to make sure that, that our, our organization and our, our community uh, is safe when they're in our buildings. So that's something that we're wrestling with. And that, again, that'll be an agenda item. So we talked about organization classifications. Our current policy, as I said, had six, and we, we uh, reworked that to four, and I'll share those here in a second. And then we got to a rental charge and service fee structure for those groups. Again, they're all drafts at this point, and nothing's even solid. We're looking for feedback in May, where we'll have a revised copy where you can actually see some numbers that the committee is still going to work on prior to then. Okay, so class one is, is very similar to the current class system that you have right there. Tax exempt. Um, it's, our it's everything going on in our schools as well as that main group of, of, uh, of uh, parent-teacher organizations, booster clubs, Spring Forward Educational Foundation, uh, those, those same group, of that, that, that current uh, class one. So you'll see the impact of that when we move to the next slide. Class two is, again, not the tax exempt. For the purposes of the uh, of living, uh, more than 50% of the organization lives in the district, and we have asked for rosters sometimes in certain organizations. If we're not quite sure, um, there is there are volunteers by nature. The, the, the majority, if not all, people are volunteers, and they're using the facilities typically, obviously in the evening and or on the weekends. Um, and then you'll see there for certain charges, for certain events, if there's, if there's charging fees or if they're collecting money at the gate, uh, a, a category, a class two group can move to class three for the service fees. And again, that's currently in our policy. That's not a change. And these are, these are some of the examples of the groups uh, that are currently in that, in that, in that realm. So if this group is tax exempt and is more than 50% of our of our uh, population of our or the group lives and resides in the district, class three is just on the other side of 50%. So it's still tax exempt. There's still a discount um, in terms of the, the facility usage, but this has more than uh, less than 50%. Um, so one of the good examples of this would be an AAU basketball team or an outside group that uh, is looking to to, to rent a rent a part of the facility. According to um, the team that handles the request, we don't have a whole lot of group th uh, class threes, uh, but once, every once in a while we get, a, we get a couple requests in this area. And then finally, class four. So these are, these are the outside organizations that don't fall in one, two, or three. Um, they're either not-for-profit or they're commercial organizations, college, universities. And the change here from the six categories down to the four, really the committee struggled with the, the conversation of are we open or is the district willing to participate in, in renting the facilities to different groups because there are some groups that want to get in or they have different events and they're shopping for whatever district they can get into or whatever venue or cafeteria like this or a gymnasium. So that class is, uh, is, is now a little more open than it had been in the past. So we're willing to have those conversations. Um, again, as I said before, there were six classes, so you got into some uh, more specifics. It's actually in the policy and all the board has a current, dra current policy that's in place in front of them. So that's class four. So we're down to four groups according to this um, current draft. Okay, so now we get to the rental charges and service fees. So rental charges, class one, no rental charges, but in some, the, some fees may apply, in terms of service fees may apply. That has to do with weekends when we don't have employees, um, custodial or, or administrative or whoever would be the, the person at the building opening the door and making sure that things that are going on there. Again, that's no change to what we're currently doing now. Real quick on, uh, on our, on our uh, facilities, um, employees, they're scheduled Monday through Friday. So anytime we have someone in on a weekend, there is additional charge to, to have them in. And if they're scheduled for a full week, a full week's worth of work, then there may be time and a half. And that gets to be another conversation in terms of fees and rates and those type of things. So I know at, at, at that time, Mr. Cooper um, would manage that with, uh, with, his, with his department as well. So. Um, that, that can be a challenge sometimes to get all the weekends covered because our buildings, as you know, if you drive by, are constantly in use. So class two, rental charges and service fees based upon a separate rental charge and service fee structure schedule, and that's the same for class three and class four. So I'll show you a draft of a couple numbers here um, for the different service fees uh, and charges. So here's an example of a rental charge. So you see class one and two together. This is our current, this is, th these numbers are based off our current policy. So this is policy 707, which is on the books and what we're currently following here. So class one and two, 
then class three, class four, class five, and six. These are real numbers that are on our, in our policy right now. So if you were a class three group and you wanted to rent the, rent the auditorium for six hours, it would be $300. That's currently in our, in our policy. If you're from the outside, group of class five or six, based upon the designation there, it, again, it would be $1,000 for six hours to rent the 10, 12 gymnasium. So the colors there do mean something. So follow the black. When I, when I switch to the next slide, you'll see black numbers that just pretty much are transposed to the next slide. And then you'll see uh, class one will be by itself, class two will be by itself, and it'll be a little, little bit different. So this, is, this would be an example of an updated rental charge schedule, okay? This, this proposed piece here, and again, this is not locked in stone. This is a, a, a draft or discussion point for tonight as well as May 14th, and these numbers will, most likely will get updated from then. Talk about a four-hour block. Last one was a six. This is a four in terms of time. This talks about potential charges on uh, Monday through Friday with a, rental, with a rental piece for group two and group three, class, sorry, class two and class three, and then on the weekend itself for a four-hour block. This does not include the service... Uh, the service fee. This is the rental charge. So there will, this is where new, new costs may be in, incurred by some organizations, which again we'll talk about in May. Any questions on that? We'll have it up. Okay. Service fees. This is what the, the breakout in the next, the next slide, you'll see service fees. And again, the service, this, this is what makes up the service fee. So there's the labor, the wage, tax, peasers for one employee equivalency. It could be, you know, someone that splits that, that, that piece. And then a, a small portion of the electricity, water, cleaning lo, uh, line if it's an outdoor field. And it does not, it does not take into account um, depreciation. Actually, depreciation was, was accounted for up in the rental, the rental portion of that. This is the service fee. So this was all, this, 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 the draft of this, this document here was shared a policy, was discussed. Um, again, that, those numbers, the numbers you'll see on the next slide are not about what's, what's going to be charged. The policy committee talked to Mr. Fink and Mr. Cooper and told us to bring back the actual costs. So those, what you're going to see are actual costs based upon the facility itself, because a facility that's larger may have a larger cost on electricity or have a larger cost on water or sewer or depending upon the, the use of the, uh, the, the facility itself. Um, so the numbers will, will slightly vary, and don't take into account when you see a weekend number here on the next slide, you'll have to realize that there was time and a half added to that number just for calculation's sake to make sure that there that was coverage on that. So here are the service fee draft number look at. Now, we'll share in some of the drafts that you saw previously, um, sorry, not drafts, but the previous numbers from other districts. It seemed like districts were settling in on one dollar figure type of thing. So again, that's a discussion point. These numbers were not tied to that. These were just pure numbers that were presented by Mr. Fink and cr created by, uh, with Mr. Cooper's feedback on those costs. So again, that's further discussion for the committee to, 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 to hone in and focus in on, on what, what, uh, what direction you want to take. The numbers, yeah, they're, most, they're all above our current rate of the custodial rate. Do you remember what that is, 40? I'm trying to think if it was 40 for the current rate. It just not, I didn't find it when I looked at it. Dr. Roach, is this still based on four hours? No, this is per hour. That's, oh, per the cost, hour. that's the cost of a per person per hour with those incidental pieces. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's some ongoing conversations that will take place in, in the committee as well as probably on May 14th. Service fee, should the rental uh, organization cover the true cost to the district? Again, that number being a, a true cost of what it costs, not necessarily, as I'll say in a second here, if someone's already on the clock on, on, a, on a Monday through Friday, so to speak. That's up for the conversation. So the, again, that's the, 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 com the committee conversation. Um, the service fees include costs that are beyond the, the, uh, the custodial salary. And then the conversation that, that the, what takes place now is if a custodian works on a Saturday for a group, I guess a classification one, um, for an organization, um, one of the booster groups or the music group, it's, they get, either get billed or they have to prepay for the, uh, just, the, just the cost of the, that, that specific custodian. I'm not sure if they use a, a general rate, but it's definitely just the cost. It's not tied to the other pieces of electricity and water and those type of things. So that conversation's got to take place. 
And should there be a service fee when, when school personnel are on the clock? That's the, that's the Monday through Friday conversation. Um, so for example, Monday through Friday when the school has even custodians cleaning uh, the school, should class two or three have to, have, to have, the, have to pay that piece? Again, this is a conversation that we're having in, in committee. Um, and as I said, weekends typically don't have people on. So any, any of those organizations, um, any, any time that happens, then we are scheduling people on to those weekends. What I hear from the what I hear from the facilities team is that if they, if there weren't if there weren't people that were renting the facilities, they may be able to get their people out quicker or get out earlier or better utilize staff, but they would get scheduled into those buildings based upon that piece. Okay. And then when we talk to facilities, and uh, we often hear that there's a lot of expectations, even when it's a Tuesday afternoon, a Tuesday evening um, practice or a Tuesday evening rental for the auditorium that there are things that need to get done ahead of time, rearrange, get, get, the, get the, clear the bleachers, or do whatever it is to get ready for the organization, as well as undo those things, clean up, get ready for the next day, because we have an expectation of, uh, of our building being in tip-top shape when our students come in the next day. So it's not as simply we're renting from five to eight. It could be having to set up 15 tables and set up 15 chairs, and although that may seem minor, I know, when, again, in speaking with the facilities group, that's an acknowledgement of the time as well as the, uh, the effort. It's not just turning the key and, and thinking that everything's taken care of because there are needs with scoreboards or you know, extra tables and those type of things um, as well as the security piece, which I mentioned before. So next steps, as I mentioned, May 14th, we're going to have a meeting. I'll be sending invitations. I'll work with uh, the facilities group to get the, the, the contact people and hoping to invite uh, one person from each organization to come and have the conversation. I do want to speak with the, with, uh, with the board probably tomorrow through email to see if once we really get a handle on the number of groups, we may either have to split it up to have cl the typical class one groups come in at one time or typical class two. Um, I'm concerned with having all these groups and things flying around in that conversation. I want to make it as meaningful as possible. So even if we have to do multiple nights, um, I think it would be better served if select the, the select that time because um, I know everyone's going to want to hear and everyone's going to want to participate in the conversation, but the proposal that you saw there or the, the, the draft or whatever happens between now and then will be different for each group. So we'll, we'll, we'll clear that up. 